Okay, here's the presentation of MEC 231A final project. In this project, we have three parts. The first part is to generate a optimal descent trajectory for a uh, rocket landing. The second part is to follow this trajectory as close as possible under model mismatch and noise and different initial conditions using an MPC algorithm called trajectory optimizing path following estimation from demonstration. And we call that TOPAD for short. Third part is some conclusions and animation. And now, Jun Hao is gonna present the first part of the project, which is to generate a optimal trajectory using some different techniques. I'm Jun Hao. Here I will introduce the dynamic model for the, our 2D rocket <coughs> simulation process. We have two systems. The first original system has only thrust vector as control input. This control input consists of two elements. The first is the magnitude of the thrust, which is represented as the ratio of thrust over max available thrust. The second is the <coughs> relative angle of the thrust vector with respect to the ver vertical x, which is described as theta. With these two control input, the thrust vector doesn't necessarily point through center of mass and thus provide some mobility through the horizontal direction. And in our second model, we have a rocket equipped with both thrust vector and grid fins. We have two grid fins deployable at this time because it's two dimensions. And in real 3D situations, we have four. And those two deployable grid fins are installed on the top of the rocket. They can provide extra lift and extra top. They only works in the atmosphere because of the aerodynamic. With the lift and the extra torque they provide, we can perform some optimized trajectory which result in better fuel saving and a better altitude angle control, control situation. The booster landing close-up at the left of this page is a reference trajectory from SpaceX. It's a real recycling process for the first stage of the Falcon 9. We could say that the trajectory is basically a S curve, and the booster starts with uh, horizontal and vertical velocity. In our model, we set the original system and the new system with grid things start at the same initial position with same initial velocities. And at the left, we could see the descent trajectory, which is optimal and generated by the F-minicon. Here we can see a huge difference between the original system and the, the new system. Yet we could see there are quite difference in the control inputs, in the fuel consumption, and in the altitude, altitude angle control part. And we shall see the plots later in the experiment section. Now Harry is going to present the second part of the final project which is the MPC algorithm called TOPAT, Trajectory Optimizing Path Following Estimation from Demonstration. Here's the idea. Now, we are given a demonstration trajectory from, of states and actions of a uh, rocket landing, and we want to follow the trajectory as close as possible. And there might be some model mismatch and noise in the, in the model. And we might also have different initial states. And there might also be some feasibility issues. How are we going to address these issues? And the application of our ideas is that um, it's going to be very useful when the given demonstration path is optimal or near optimal, which in our case is very optimal. And the second application is that model mismatch or imperfect models will still be usable under our MPC algorithm. And we want to follow the demo trajectory very closely, given these model mismatches. So that after we have this algorithm, the MPC following is going to be very generalizable. And here's the algorithm. We have a cost function where we call Q of X and U, where X is the state and U is the action or input. This is essentially a weighted sum of states and inputs mismatch and the, optim and the original cost function. And we can add in slack variables to address the invisibility issues in the control domain. And also we can fine tune the ways to track the desired inputs and states behaviors. And in MPC, 
we are iteratively solving an optimization problem as follows. We're minimizing a, um, the sum of Q function, right, plus this optional select variable such that we are respecting the original or the new model um, dynamics for all K, and XK and UK are in the given domains, and we have these initial conditions. Note that the F prime represents that we might use a different model than before, than the given trajectory because we might have different models and noise. And here's the overall towpad algorithm. We are given a demonstration path, Telstar, a system model F, a cost function J, simulation horizon M, weighted factors WX, WU, and WJ, and MPC prediction horizon N, and slack variables, which are optional, lambda and slack variable weights, epsilon. And we do the following loop. For t in 1 to m, we extract the states and inputs from the demo's trajectory as x and u. And we define the, uh, the loss function as before. And we run the MPC with prediction horizon n to minimize the cost function, which is the width sum of the mismatch and the original cost function. And we obtain the optimal action and state. And if the, if this MPC is infeasible, then we can add slackness to the input constraints and increase the weights of slack variables as defined in, in the cost function Q of X and U. And then we append the optimal state and inputs to our final um, output trajectory. And in experiment, we are given a near optimal or actually optimal rocket landing trajectory provided in part one by Jun Hao. And secondly, we're going to follow the trajectory using towpad. And note that we have a model mismatch because to make the following more challenging, I introduced a Gaussian noise in some states and inputs readings so that the model is now imperfect and very different or uh, slightly different than uh, what we had in the trajectory optimization step and under different initial states. And here's the result. There are three different uh, trajectories than the given one. And each one had a different initial state and different model noise. So each one of the three given models is different. And the initial con conditions are also different. And we are trying to follow the given uh, pre-computed demonstration path as close as possible. Here you can see it's behaving very stably. And, it's, and, it's try, and the towpad algorithm is, is forcing the MPC to follow the path very closely. I'm Sammy. I will talk about the conclusion and, and the animation. So here is five figures of the comparison between the system with grid fines and without grid fines. So although for the first figure, the decent trajectory, they both have S shape, which is quite similar but we can definitely tell difference based on other figures like the theta compression, the component of the fuel consumption, the thrust control command, and the grid fin control command. Also, we can tell from the theta comparison figure that the system with grid fins stabilized theta faster without any oscillation while the original system experienced an oscillation. And with the extra lift provided by the grid fins, the new system tends to glide rather than landing directly, which saves around 8% of carried fuel, which is illustrated on the third figure. For the animation part, since from the optimization we only got 20 data points, so through polynomial fit, we got 100 data points by polynomial fit and interpolation. And finally, the animation is as follows. So from the, this animation, we can see that the rocket follows a smooth path, which tends to save a lot of fuel.